What's up, y'all? Do you remember that 200 mile an hour bike with 200 horsepower that also has 200 miles of range? The Damien Hypersport. Let's talk about it. good to see you guys again. I hope everybody's staying safe. It seems like half the country's under snow right now. And I just want to thank you for being here. So let's get on with it. So what are we talking about today? So I just had to be ambitious and go after the most advanced electric motorcycle on the planet and give my two cents on the Damon Hypersport and Damon the company itself. It's been over a year since the Damon Hypersport was unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show in 2020, where they won the Best of Innovation Award, and they've won a lot of awards since then. Damon has won more awards than Walt Disney. I mean, they have won so many awards, and they don't even have a production bike yet. There was a lot of buzz about them back in January of last year and into the year, but what about now? What are they up to now? Let's start by talking about Damon the company. Who is Damon? And why do they have this seemingly normal ass sounding name? Damon Motorcycles was founded by none other than comedian Damon Wayans. All right, that was a total lie. It was actually founded by Matt Damon and its headquarters is located in Damon, Missouri. All right, all right. Damon is a technology company that was founded and is located in Vancouver, Canada, eh? And they're planning to produce some pretty advanced electric motorcycles. So as you can see on this timeline, Damon was founded in around 2017. Three years later, they debuted at CES. The mission for this company is safer, smarter motorcycling. Their plan is to integrate an array of sensors into the vehicle and then couple that with machine learning to basically detect collisions or obstacles uh, that the rider may be facing. The CEO and founder's name is Jay Garad. He started some EV company in the early 2010s and he went on to found a company called Moeo. Mojio? Some connected car solutions company that's grown into something. CTO Dom Kwong is also a co-founder of the company, and their COO is also the former president of Alta Motors. So again, the company's goal is to make motorcycling smarter, safer, and to hit full collision avoidance by 2030. So what are they producing? Nothing yet. It's worth noting that the company hasn't completely started from scratch. Damon purchased the intellectual property from the company Mission Motors, which was a leader on the electric motorcycle front. Mission Motors competed in racing events while they were around, and they also supplied some of their technology to other companies, including Harley Davidson for the Livewire project. Mission eventually went bankrupt, supposedly due to losing several of their key employees to other Silicon Valley companies. So I just wanted to note that Damon is using an iteration of Mission's motor and inverter technology in their bikes now. So what are they designing? Enter the Hypersport HS. The Hypersport Hypersport? The Hypersport horse <laughs> An electric superbike rated at 200 horsepower, 200 miles an hour, and 200 miles of range. Uh, sold. <laughs> sold. What, what else are you going to ride now? 200 horsepower plus 200 miles per hour plus 200 miles of range equals 600 hopes and dreams. But hey, let's break it down. That's why we're here. But wait. There's more! The Hypersport allows you to change your riding position from a commuter position to a sport position. It comes equipped with 360 degree predictive awareness, which alerts you in the event that you're going to collide with something, and uses artificial intelligence or machine learning to continually get better at trying to predict dangerous situations. Alright, you know what time it is! Let's go through these specs and see how everything looks. Alright, so 0-60 to 60 mile an hour time, less than 3 seconds? I believe that. There's no reason not to. I don't think we need to fact check that. Uh, range is listed at 200 plus miles combined highway and city. We're definitely going to talk about that. 200 horsepower. All right, that's peak power that may be sustained for a very short duration of time. Top speed of 200 miles an hour, which again can be sustained for a very short amount of time. So Copilot, Damon's collision avoidance software and hardware and shift, the rider position changing hardware uh, are included. 4G connectivity and data is also included, although I would expect there to be a subscription price per month like Tesla does, which is like, I think, nine, ten bucks. Two 1080p cameras on the bike, which feed data to the co-pilot system. 17-inch wheels, dual rotor front discs for your brakes. You got a single disc in the back, and I assume some regen, some regenerative braking. A liquid-cooled 150 kilowatt peak motor and a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. So what's missing here? Oh, I don't know, maybe a weight figure? The Hypersport has been purported to weigh about 450 pounds, which would make it less than the Zero SRS and the Energica Ego. That's over 50 pounds less, and those bikes have a similar battery capacity as well. Now, Damon has this philosophy of using the battery pack as a structural element. So is it possible that they've been able to shed that much weight by using the battery pack as the frame and by using a powered-in electric motor? So I applaud them. I mean, I love the idea of using the battery pack as a structural piece. 
for racing that is not as a consumer can you imagine having to replace your battery pack you're replacing the entire bike pretty much the whole the whole frame the whole shebang and you got a two-year warranty so what happens after that two years how much is that going to cost all right so this whole battery drivetrain frame combo that we're talking about is called hyperdrive Damon just loves to trademark every last little piece that they can. Somewhere in Vancouver, Canada, right now, their marketing team is getting together to decide what to call their patented handlebars. Probably something like Hypergrip. So let's talk about this industry-leading battery pack. So the battery's liquid-cooled, um, so they've got a rated 3C continuous discharge rate. A lot of this on this list is just standard at 2020 at this point. Passive propagation resistance is pretty cool. Uh, it prevents the cell-to-cell -cell thermal runaway effect, so you'll see this a lot in aerospace because you know they want to keep planes and spaceships from going boom voltage sense integration overcharge protection i mean my 20 dollars bms from china has those features standard now sealed ip67 rated it better be and they're using the 21700 cell the 21700 is the successor to the 18650 which you've probably heard about all right let's break this battery down damon claims an energy storage of 20 kilowatt hours and a nominal voltage of 450 volts. Yes, 450. 450 volts is higher than some of the other manufacturers' battery packs. And one of the main benefits to going with a higher voltage is that your current is much less as a result for the same amount of power since watts equals volts times amps. And when you're using less current, less amps, you can generally use smaller diameter cabling. So that saves on weight and cost, and you're gonna have less heat as a result. So 20 kilowatt hours divided by 450 volts nominal gives us about 44.4 amp hours. So we're just gonna pick a middle of the road 21700 cell. So with a nominal voltage per cell of about 3.6, 450 divided by 3.6 gives you about 125 cells in series. At about four amp hours per cell, 44 over four is about 11 cells in parallel. So 125 cells in series, 11 cells in parallel, 125 times 11 is 1,375 cells total. 1,375 multiplied by 69 grams gives you 94.87 kilograms, which, you know, the rest of the world understands. But for us commie hating freedom lovers, that's going to be about 210 pounds. And that's just in the cell weight alone. So the battery is also liquid cooled, right? Water cooled, like the Tesla battery is. So the pack is rated at 3C continuous discharge. So what does that mean? That means you can put out three times your amp hour rating continuously. In this case, that's 44 amp hours of the battery pack multiplied by three, which gives you 132 amps that you could discharge continuously. And multiply that number by 450, and that gives you about 60 kilowatts of power continuous. And based on their 200 horsepower and 150 kilowatt power rating, I'd say that their cell is capable of probably 8 to 10 C discharge peak. And we're talking a short duration here, like 10 to 20 seconds of discharge. Just a short, short amount of time for the peak current. All right, moving on. We're going to talk about one of the other components to hyperdrive. The drivetrain. The motor, specifically. This motor has more horses than Ocala, Florida. What does that even mean? Again, we've got an industry-leading power density. You know what it is? It's got a direct-cooled six-phase IPM motor. Stands for interior permanent magnet. The magnets are embedded in the rotor. An IPM motor is kind of like a hybrid between a permanent magnet synchronous motor and a switched reluctance motor. Tell you what, I'll make a video on different types of electric motors, and I'll plug that right here once I do it. This motor, as a result, can be very power dense. You can make it smaller, lighter. This motor puts out 160 kilowatts peak, spins up to 16,000 RPM, woo-wee! And it only weighs 22 kilograms, or 48 pounds in freedom units. And it's got a peak torque of 235 Newton meters, or about 173 pound feet. So Damon's got a nice little graph here uh, in the power density section, and one axis is in watt hours. No, no. Looks like someone switched up watt hours and watts again. Just interchanging power and energy, you know, nothing wrong with that. Same thing, right? Thanks, Damon, because now I can shamelessly plug a video that I just made describing this problem. And it happens all the time, all the time. Sure, this was just a PowerPoint guy and maybe he didn't know, but... And if the engineer made the problem, that's a little creepy. I'm really not trying to rant about this for, for too long, but I, I just, it just grinds my gears. And so what? You get 7.3 kilowatts per kilogram, I think is what they're trying to say. And you're going to compare that to a Tesla Model S P100D, whose motor, AC induction motor weighs like 70 pounds plus, and they've got two motors on board. I don't know. That's, that's dumb. But nonetheless, nonetheless, if Damon is capable of producing this, and that's what this motor puts out, it's, it's pretty impressive, I will say. And so this is the inverter that's shown in the PowerPoint. Um, it's definitely got the Mission Motors logo on it. So they're definitely using Mission Tech. And like I said, I'm sure they've iterated on top of the Mission stuff that they started with. Uh, it's just funny to see that, that logo in this PowerPoint. So with level two charging, you could charge this bike in two and a half to three hours, which they claim would take about 45 minutes to go from zero to 80% with DC fast charging. All right, let's talk performance. 
in case you didn't know. The bike has a rated top speed of 200 miles per hour. Can this bike actually get up to 200 miles an hour? Probably, but it'd be nice to see some video or data that proves that. So like we did in the Saunders video, we're gonna calculate the power required at that speed, and then we're gonna compare that to the power given by Damon. So first I needed to estimate the frontal area of the Hypersport. Frontal area is an input into that equation, which finds power. So I took this photo of a frontal view of a Hypersport, and I scaled it basically using the tire dimensions, the seat height, the wheelbase, and assuming about a six foot tall rider, just to get us close. So I used CAD software to basically estimate the area of the rider in the bike in the upright position and in the prone position here. So we'll use the prone position area for this calculation at 200 miles an hour, which gives us a CDA value of about 0.34. Now using our handy dandy spreadsheet, remember we're all about decent results quickly. We want, we want results and we want them fast, but we want them close enough. So we see here that to achieve a speed of 200 miles an hour, you need 154 kilowatts. So it's reasonable to assume that the Hypersport is capable of 200 miles an hour. At 200 miles an hour, you would theoretically deplete your battery pack in less than eight minutes. But it's not like you'd be cruising at 200 miles an hour continuously. I mean, this this would work out for, you know, racing where you hit 200 miles an hour in a straight, like the Mugello Strait in Italy, right? You could walk 200 miles an hour down that straight, or you could be a jackass on your local interstate for, you know, a minute or less, whatever. Remember that continuous power rating of 60 kilowatts we talked about earlier? Ish kilowatts will get you about 145 miles an hour continuous. And you could do this for about 20 minutes before you discharged your battery completely. And for anyone who's curious about the gearing, the electric motor 16,000 RPM limit does correspond to 200 mile per hour at the wheel. The numbers work out. Damon does know how to make numbers work. <laughs> And that's more than some companies I've seen. Now that is some performance that will leave you screaming, oh Canada. The range of this bike is listed as 200 plus miles. That's using a mix of highway and urban cycles. Specifically using an SAE standard J2982, which I think I might make a separate video on that actually. But the bike goes through a series of tests on a dynamometer. So remember that this is just an estimation. It's not necessarily based on a lot of real world testing. And their straight 70 mile an hour highway range is listed as 161 miles. I think they're using a very optimistic coefficient of drag for this bike. I would expect it to be less than that number. So I think their shift idea is actually really cool. You're not stuck in one position the entire time, so it could make for a much more comfortable ride. In this video, the rear set comes up, the handlebars go down, and the windscreen also comes down. Um, it's pretty cool, and it's user adjustable. And onto the Copilot safety system. I believe that they're changing the name of Copilot because it already exists in industry. Copilot is essentially a 360 degree protection system, and it uses a combination of instruments and sensors such as radar, cameras, to detect potential threats or obstacles or collisions. It can detect up to 64 objects around the rider in a 360 degrees. So there's a lot of software running behind the scenes at any given time for the system to work in real time. What are the outputs of this safety system? So how is this knowledge of an imminent threat transferred to the rider? They're using a combination of haptic feedback in the handlebars, which is vibration, and a thin strip of LEDs on top of the windscreen. For example, if a collision is detected to happen in front of you, you'll probably feel the handlebars vibrate, like pulsate, and you'll see a red LED accent at the top of the windscreen in your peripheral vision. The windscreen LEDs also offer blind spot protection, which will light up an amber color color when there's an object in your blind spot. So the system will also notify you of objects or imminent threats approaching you from behind. So this could be great if you're stationary and an object's coming towards you and doesn't plan to stop. Seriously, how many motorcyclists have been hit while sitting at a stoplight, you know? At least if you feel it vibrate, maybe, maybe you could jump off and, you know, dip out before it happens. And with this system, there's a lot of data traffic at any given time. And Damon says this data is going to be streamed to their cloud, or it will be used as training data for machine learning algorithms or artificial intelligence. This will inevitably make the bike smarter at predicting scenarios at which it could help you be safer. And I'm sure at some point in the future, Damon wants to offer rider assistance features such as, you know, assisted braking. I'm really curious to hear from you guys that ride, you know, how do you feel about technology being integrated with your bike in this way? Do you feel like it's an infringement on, you know, your cycling ability? Do you feel like it's going to definitely make things safer? Okay, so let's touch on the different models of the Hypersport that are being offered. The Hypersport Premier is the top of the line bike. You know, it's got Brembo brakes, Olin suspensions, a single-sided swing arm, and some interesting color choices. The Premier starts at $39,995. The Hypersport HS is the same thing as the Premier, but has standard suspension, standard brakes, a two-sided swing arm, and just the standard color schemes. And the HS starts at $24,995. And you can see with the SX and SE models, the prices are reduced, as well as the horsepower and the top speed. Base model, or the SE, starts at $16,995, has 100 horsepower, 108 mile range, and 120 top speed. It's definitely worth noting that all of these models will have a shift system and co-pilot system come with them standard. Now, will they offer DC fast charging for all these bikes? Will it be integrated? 
There's also been talk of vehicle to grid technology that might be included with these bikes. And that would allow you to use your bike essentially as a generator. And the average household in the US uses about 30 kilowatt hours per day. So you'd be able to run your house for, I don't know, more than half a day. So the question that everyone wants to know, when will the first bikes be delivered? CEO Jay Garrod claims that the first bikes will be delivered in Q4 of 2021. You know, I think it's obvious that they've got a hell of a lot of testing ahead of them, especially for the rider assistance features, because it's only going to be as good as the data that you can feed it. And their customers will be the best test subjects of all providing all the real world data that they want. It's going to take time for, you know, production and tooling spool up. Then you've got to account time for quality assurance, making sure the product that's coming off of the line is up to customer standards. Contacted Damon and found out that if you were to put it in order right now, you would not get the bike until late 2022. So let's take a bet. Do you think Damon delivers the Hypersport as advertised in Q4 of this year? Take the unpopular bet and say that deliveries don't happen until January or later in 2022. Final thoughts. I think Damon's idea of fusing safety tech with electric motorcycles is intriguing. I mean, they're a tech company, you know? They don't have to produce motorcycles. They don't have to get into the manufacturing business. They could license and sell their technology and be fine, probably. Assuming that it works. If they can keep the price of the HS at $24,995, that's really attractive, especially for the tech that you're getting. For, for what's advertised, at least. Maybe I can make a future video, you know, comparing this bike to the Zeros, the Energicas, etc. And I would love to see a video of them doing 200 miles an hour and detecting some obstacles, you know, and what that kind of looks like. Where is this bike on the Vaporware to Viable product meter? I'd say somewhere in the middle right now. I don't think it's likely that they pull a resin run where they take your reservations and just dip out. They're also in this stage as a company where it's sort of a dog and pony show, you know, balance, and you also have to get it done. So can they get it done with their 40-something employees before burning through all of their funding? You have to stay tuned and see. And that's going to do it for this video. Please leave me some feedback. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. Feel free to subscribe if you liked the content. I got videos coming every week. I look forward to hearing from you. Stay safe out there.